A Diverse Life, the podcast in which we explore life in all its diversity. Mental Health, Let's Talk ADHD. Written by Henry Field. Read by Ian Pringle. It's Mental Health Awareness Week, which means only seven days until we can forget about it and ignore it for another year. After all, what business has the time to think about mental health? It's not like it's real, right? No, not. Through my school and career, I've always had similar feedback. Henry, you're great at what you do, but please sit at your desk. Henry, you know you're weird, right? I did know, yes. Henry, will you shut up? During my therapy, I learned a lot about myself and developed coping mechanisms to appear as normal as possible. Silly little things like putting my hand up during meetings as I know I have a habit of butting in before someone has finished a point, wearing a headset with two speakers so I'm not distracted by noise around me whilst on the phone, make sure I plan my routine so I know what I'm doing in advance. The last couple of years, it's got worse. Forgetting people's names, having to do lists for to-do lists, being so strict with my own routine that I couldn't cope with traffic making me get to Asda later than I planned. Something had to be done. The coping mechanisms weren't enough. If I wanted to be working at my best, I needed to get some help. October 2018. After six months of assessments with the Hamad Rayad Centre in Cardiff, I was diagnosed with ADHD. To anyone that thinks this is an easy diagnosis, let me tell you. They contacted my old school, they contacted my therapists from eight years ago, they had long conversations with family members and old employers. It wasn't diagnosed on a whim. At first, I replayed every conversation in my head that I had had with clients that didn't want to consider candidates because of some form of disability, invisible or otherwise. I heard all those walls I had worked to break down for others build up around me. My own reaction was unexpected and made me really think about who I was. I now take medication three times per day to assist with my focus and memory. If anyone told me six months ago a tiny pill would make such a dramatic difference, I would call them a liar. Now, based on this diagnosis and information gleaned from my answers to many, many questionnaires, I am being assessed for autism, as many of my characteristics match what the specialists believe to be on the spectrum. Do I care? Not much. Will it change my life if they say I'm on the spectrum? Not at all. I'll be the same person I am now and the same person I was a year ago. I'll just have a deeper understanding of myself and the additional effort and coping strategies I need to be successful. My career. Now, as the resourcing and talent manager for a law firm, I'm in the ideal position to make sure we are offering candidates based on their experience, transferable skills and ability to cope with the role and nothing else. Being the best person for the role doesn't mean being a robot. It doesn't mean being nothing more than your job title. Who we are is made up of our experiences in life, our history, our memories and our brains. People function differently. That's what makes the world interesting. Many HR departments are great at talking the talk. I feel privileged to work within a team that walk the walk just as well. So, what am I getting at? The point is, due to my own coping mechanisms and the lengths I go to to make sure I hide my quirks, many people wouldn't realise I had a mental health condition. They wouldn't realise I rehearse the most basic of conversations in my head. They wouldn't realise the energy and effort it takes to make sure I'm not overthinking, overanalyzing and over-questioning everything. Without speaking out, people wouldn't know the difficulty of having a black and white mind in a grey world. Due to my past and having to open up to specialists, I am very self-aware and not so proud I cannot speak openly about how I think and how it affects me. As business owners, line managers and HR professionals, we should all be making sure we offer an environment in which staff can thrive, talk about who they are and not feel they are going to be persecuted for being different. Then, and only then, can we say we are a truly inclusive society. Advice? I'm not qualified to give advice. One person's experience doesn't mean everyone will be the same, but if I had to recommend one thing, if you're a parent of someone with a learning difficulty, or you're a colleague or a friend, don't assume they're not capable. Speak to them. See what help they need rather than what help you think they want. Don't assume they are incapable. Instead, see what you can do to make it easier for them to do something themselves. 
It's okay to still push and challenge, it's just important to know where the line is, which you only find by asking. At the same time, if you're living with a mental health need or disability and someone asks a question, the likelihood is they are asking because they want to be educated. We are equally responsible for making sure we are approachable and understand that a safe environment to talk goes both ways. I have had people ask me some pretty direct questions about my mental health and my sexuality over the years. It's easy to fly off the handle, but it's more beneficial to educate. Again, I cannot stress enough. I am one person with one experience and one personal perception. I am not qualified in any other way. But if me sharing my experience helps just one person, I feel something good has come from an otherwise trying year. That was Mental Health Let's Talk ADHD, written by Henry Field, narrated by Ian Pringle. That was A Diverse Life 7 Extra. Um, if you haven't heard A Diverse Life 7, then go back and listen to it because um, we interview Henry who wrote that article and it's a brilliant interview and you really get a sense of the experiences that he went through when he was diagnosed with ADHD. I don't know if you agree with me, but I think that um, audio can really bring an article to life sometimes and it's particularly useful because in the busy world we live in, people don't always have time to read an article but they will put it on in their car, they can listen to it as they're driving, they might put it in their headphones on the commute to work or listen to it in the shed when they're doing something else. So um, if that's something you'd like to happen with your article or maybe you have a busy blog post that you would like bringing to life for audio, then do get in touch because this is a service that I offer. You can contact me, ianpringlevoice at gmail.com or visit my website, www.ianpringlevoiceover.com and on the website there are lots of examples of voiceover work that I've done. Thanks very much for listening. A Diverse Life podcast is a face-up theatre and workplace diversity solutions co-production brought to you today by Ian Pringle.